Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. I'm excited for the show tonight. It should be a lot of fun. So, uh, thank you. First and foremost, thank you very much, Eric, one of my Patreon supporters. You've been so generous to me, not only on this channel, but on my other channel too, so I appreciate you very much. But Eric was uh, excited to share this lineup of bottles with me, and he had them shipped to me. Uh, so, thank you so much. This should be a lot of fun because this is a, it's good, it's going to be a lot to compare and it's also going to give us a little bit of insight into the world of American single malt whiskeys. I have had a number of patrons send me things already, and if that's something that you're interested in, you know, I've reviewed a couple of bottles that people have sent my way uh, or sponsored for me to pick up myself. If that's something that you want to do, if you're ever interested in making sure that a bottle that you love ends up on the channel and we can talk about it and get the word out on your favorite whiskey, head on over to my Patreon. The link is in the description and uh, maybe even the pinned comment if I remember to do that. So we'll see. But Eric wasn't the only person to send me bottles this week. I also got a package of bottles from Country Wine and Spirits, uh, which is an online liquor store that you can visit. And they do have a pretty solid selection that's constantly rotating. And uh, it is secondary market, so you have a little bit of a markup. But they uh, made sure to make sure that if you use my name, True Vanguard, which is the name of my other channel, not this one, but True Vanguard, I'll leave a, uh, I'll, I'll type out a link to their uh, store and what that discount code is for those of you who aren't familiar with my other channel in the in description and pinned comment as well. But anyways, you, you're always welcome to peruse their wares and use that discount code True Vanguard when you check out for a discount off of their bottles too. All right, with no further ado, let's dive into these single malt American whiskeys. So the distillery on the tabletop tonight is Westward. Uh, Westward whiskeys, and they are pretty cool. You know, I really enjoyed uh, kind of going down the rabbit hole in my uh, research about them. So this is Portland, Oregon, and uh, they are former brewers, beer brewers turned distillers. So they sort of bring their expertise because obviously, uh, well, not obviously, if you don't know this, the process of making whiskey starts with making beer. It's all the same up to a certain point. In fact, most distillers call what they put into the still beer because that's what it is. It literally is just beer. So, um, you know, you go through the process of getting your malted uh, grains, in this case barley, uh, you mash them, you ferment them, and at that point it's beer. And so they decided, hey, we're good at making beer. Let's take it a step further into another thing that we really love and appreciate, and that is single malt whiskey. So this is one of the things I love about uh, this distillery is they are unapologetically very much team single malt. And that's really what you want out of any craft distiller at all, is you want them to believe 110% in their product and their expression of it. And uh, Westward very much has a strong identity. And to me, that's one of the most important things for a distiller is to have a strong core identifying, you know, group of features that makes them stand out against the backdrop of, you know, there's now in America over a thousand distilleries and Westward is 110% unapologetically on team. Single malt is the best expression of whiskey in the world. Uh, on your left, my right, is their straight up standard offering single malt, uh, American single malt whiskey. This is 100% barley, malted barley, grown right there. Uh, just outside of town in Portland, Oregon. And uh, some of the barley is, uh, it's all from the Pacific Northwest. So some of it's in, you know, Idaho, you know, just across uh, some state lines. So it's all in that general area, right? So leaning into their local uh, area, making their beer, distilling it, coming out with American Single Malt. That's this. Next to that on the tabletop, we have them uh, paying homage to not only their roots as former brewers, but also to the locale. Oregon is very well known for its beer uh, industry over there and beer culture. So this one is actually, it's a great story here. <clears throat> so they make their American single malt and then they take the barrel, which is a new American oak, charred oak barrel, and they send it off to a brewery. And the brewery then ages their stout beer in that barrel. And then once the stout beer is done and they drain the barrel, they give the barrel back. And so the barrel's now been seasoned with that stout beer and then they finish their single malt in this now seasoned stout barrel so this expression here is uh then finished in those stout barrels so it's going to take on some of those characteristics so this is the stout cask single malt and uh this is this comes in at 90 proof 
the standard single malt offering. The stout offering is a uh, 92, 92 proof. So 46% ABV, 92 proof. Next is this one. You'll notice the, the level on it is a little bit lower. That's because I took it over to my in-laws because I thought I would share it with uh, my father-in-law and my brother-in-law. So this we already cracked open and dive, dove into, and they were blown away by this. So I'm excited to get to this one tonight as well. But this one I've already tried. This is the uh, Pinot Noir cask finish, and this one comes in again at 90 proof. And what's great about this is, like I said, they're very much into you know their local area and their local culture, that Pacific Northwest. Uh, and this just is another expression of that identity as well. So the Pinot Noir cask finishes because Pinot Noir is very popular uh, there in the uh, the Northwest, specifically in Oregon. So there's a, I forget the name of it, there's a valley. There's a, a valley there in, in Oregon that is well known for the wineries and, you know, the vineyards up there. And it's at the same, like it's at the same uh, latitude as uh, the primary regions in France, that are known for their Pinot Noirs. So interesting connection there. So Pinot Noir, those grapes, they do great there, grow well, make great wines. And so it's these uh, French oak barrels, uh, casks, sorry, that they these wineries age their Pinot Noir in. And then Westward grabs those barrels, snatches those barrels up and finishes, not for four months, like a lot of places finish their whiskeys. No, they take their single malt and they finish it in those barrels for up to like two years. So that's a long time to be in a French oak Pinot Noir cask from the local area, which is really cool. So I'm excited about this one. And last but not least on the tabletop, we have their cask strength uh, single malt. So this is it's their American single malt, but it's not diluted down. Uh, like I said, this is 90 proof. This one here is 125. So it's going to maintain some of those uh, more robust flavors, I'm assuming. Actually, I haven't tried it yet. So we'll see. So let's start tasting them. I think that's important too, yeah? Now, I'm a, a visual person, so I like to take notes as I nose and taste. This isn't a cheat sheet. There's nothing on it, but there will be when I'm done. So this is just their standard American single malt offering. It's a very bright nose. I get a lot of brand cereal on the nose. It comes through very strong. Brand cereal, very malty. I actually, I get a little bit of like um, saltwater taffy. You know, the saltwater taffy on the nose? It's maybe even a little bit like a briny. I don't know if that makes sense, but it almost like takes me to the seaside. Let's taste it. Okay, there's a lot going on there. Now it is not as timid as a lot of Scotch whiskeys are, uh, you know, Scotch single malts. A lot of that has to do with uh, American standards of identity. So they're not using used barrels for their primary aging, which I, these don't have an age statement on them, but we know that it's at least four years. Uh, for the initial aging process, and it's in virgin oak barrels, so it's not a used barrel like a lot of the, um, well, like all the Scotch distillers do. So it's definitely got a lot more of that barrel influence, because a lot of those flavors haven't been stripped out of that oak yet. A sort of brininess comes through on the palate, but it's a little bit. It's definitely, definitely got that malty cereal kind of a taste to it, like that brand cereal that was on the nose comes through on the palate. It's not overly bright and fruity. It's more like your roasty malty kind of a vibe. Maybe in a little bit of like milk chocolate. Briny, brand cereal, milk chocolate. That's what I get. And definitely a lot more of that oak influence that you don't get a ton of in your scotch whiskeys. So that's what's going to make it stand apart. But yeah, there's a lot going on in that. That's pretty tasty. I like that. So now they took this product and they did some other stuff to it. And that's the rest of the tasting. So this one is the stout finish. And they do use the word cask. It says stout cask. But that's because their, uh, influ their primary influence is, uh, you know, Scotch whiskey, Scotch single malt whiskey. And of course, over there, they call barrels casks. So even though we're in America, they're still speaking Scotch language. And that's okay. Like I said, unapologetically on team single malt. Oh my, that's way different. Oh, that nose is much more assertive. Definitely, uh, I get nutty, but not like your sweet nuts. More like your your salty roasted nut, like Chex Mix, Chex Mix on the nose, but also um, bitter, like bitter chocolates, like your dark chocolate candies, really bitter. 
Much more roasty. But yes, very assertive comparatively. Let's taste it. That is much different. That bitter chocolate definitely comes through. A little bit of sweetness on it. It's not all bitter, but it has definitely got that bitter chocolate vibe to it. Those dark chocolates. And those roasted nuts are definitely in there on the palate too. Just like they were on the nose. It's really interesting. The finish is like that, that bitter chocolate, but it sort of like hands the baton off to that tannic oak. It was really interesting. A sort of prog- nat- but a very natural progression for those flavors, right? You're not going from t- you know two very stark different flavors on the profile spectrum. They're really similar on the flavor profile spectrum. That that bitter chocolate to the tannic oak. They definitely hand the baton off, but it is a natural progression. But that is definitely quite unique. Okay, the Pinot Noir cask finish. Like I said. Two years, up to two years in those Pinot Noir French oak barrels. Casks, I'm sorry, I will speak your language. Casks, sort of honor their craft and speak their language there. Oh, that nose is delightful. Like your, your dried dark fruits, like um, fig and dates and raisins. Very present on the nose. It's maybe even a little bit like jammy. Not like uh, not like the jam you get at the store. More more like if you were to go to like some some country store out in the boondocks, you know, and they got their homemade jams in those mason jars, and there's chunks of fruit in there. That's what I get. Very jammy. And that tannic French oak is is a little bit. It's a, it's there on the nose too, right on the back end of it. Let's taste it. Oh man, that is the the brightest expression of this whiskey so far. As far as I know, it's the exact same distillate, right? It's the same mash bill. It's all malted barley. It's the same product coming off the still. And this is just the standard offering of it that's diluted down to 90 proof. This is that same product, but in the in the uh, stout cask. And this is the same product, but with two years in the Pinot Noir French oak casks. So just that one difference of being in those Pinot Noir casks for a couple of years makes this so much brighter than the other offerings so far. It's sweet, fruity, a little bit floral there right on the tail end of the palate, but then it just progresses very naturally into a a really subtly tannic oak on the tail end with a little bit of that like roasted malty vibe, just kind of tying it all together. It's just ever present, but never at the forefront. I could drink that all night. That is so approachable. I like that a lot. Shall we move on to the cask strength? So no finish on this one. They didn't do anything crazy in that regard. It is just simply not diluted like this is, down to 90 proof. This one is kept at 62.5% ABV, a.k.a. uh, 125 proof. Unfiltered, upstanding, and uncut American single malt whiskey. Shall we then? Let's nose it. It's a pretty proof forward nose. Like one of the first things I get is sort of like that um, that permanent marker vibe. But it, it doesn't overpower everything else. But it is the first thing in the room on the nose. But trailing right behind it is a subtle sweetness. I actually, it reminds me of like a cream cheese Danish. Kind of reminds me of a cream cheese Danish. Maybe even like a graham cracker too. Let's taste it. Oh my. It, it definitely drinks its proof. It's hot. And that's the first thing I get hit with. But then it, it almost gives you like toasted nuts. That graham cracker's there on the palate. The cream cheese Danish isn't there. It was there on the nose. It's not there on the palate. Maybe a uh, black peppercorn. Sorry for the short jump cut there. I actually, uh, the battery died on my camera. That's my bad. Where were we? So on the palate, I get that, um, I get that peppercorn up front with the, the heat of the alcohol. But then it transitions, more like a like a graham cracker sweetness, maybe a little bit of honey, and that's kind of where it stays there. I kind of expected more out of this in terms of flavor progression, with it being at cask strength. But it's kind of simple. It, it really is just kind of like like that heat and pepper up front, sweet honey graham cracker on the end. And there's not a lot else in between for me, but it definitely drinks its proof. It's got some heat on it. So if you like those flavors, then hey, you're gonna like that. Uh, but uh, I was kind of hoping it would offer a little more than just that. But I'm gonna give you my ranking of these 
I think my favorite one, if I had to pick a favorite, is definitely the Pinot Noir cask finish. That was delightful. Absolutely delicious. Um, I drank the most of that one of all four here. If I was to recommend you pick up any of these, I think that's what it would be. It would be the Westward Whiskey Single Malt Pinot Noir Cask. That was delicious. I can drink that any day. I think that'd be my number one standout best pick. Followed by their standard offering, and then the stout, and then the cask strength. So, there you go. Thank you so much, Eric, for sending these to me. I really appreciate that. That was very generous of you. Uh, I really enjoyed these. I think this one's definitely going to be something. I'll, I'll probably pick up another bottle of that sometime. I would love to share that with more folks. Very good. But let me know in the comments if you've had any American single malts that really stood out to you, that you really enjoyed. What did you like about them? Who distilled them? Let me know. I'm always looking to expand my horizons in that regard. Thank you so much for watching the video. I encourage you, as always, to drink responsibly. So, cheers. May you get better with age and live richly. We'll catch you in the next video. Bye-bye.